All right, hi. This is a quick introduction to High Rails 2.4 version of software, 2.4XX. And uh, some really nice new features here, so we want to share them with you guys, give you a quick overview uh, before we do our broadcast, and uh, I'll go right to it. So the, basically the way it works is the workflow is over here on the right-hand side. Object, I'm going to add myself an STL and I will just pick a sphere right now and uh, you'll notice that the sphere is already justified and everything and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and all you do if you've pre-configured your slicer so it has a s series of defaults these are remembered when you load it it automatically is ready to go so I'm gonna do process and slice and now it's uh, slicing it up and uh, <coughs> it's done slicing now it's writing the output to the G code and because my G-code already exists, it asks me before it overwrites it. I'm saying yes and yes. And now um, it will load the G-code file, and it has actually superimposed the G-code file on top of the STL. So you will now get a chance to look at that. So we have the ability now to uh, take the G-code, uh, or the STLs, and we're going to change the opacity. We already crank it down a little bit. So I'm going to go back and I am going to select the G-code and we are going to change the view to single layer mode and you can see that the uh, STL is still ghosting there and as we start to slide you will see how the G-code shows you how it follows up and down. Okay, so that's basically what's going on and we wanted to give you a quick shot at that. Uh, we're going to start over again now, and we're going to do something that we've been trying to do for a long time and is finally practical. So this time I'm going to grab an STL, and I'm going to grab a cone, and uh, see where the cone went. There's a cone right there, and uh, I'm going to move that towards the center. And now I'm going to take and I'm going to add a sphere and you'll notice that the sphere is attached to the cone. It looks like uh, one of those bad movies where the guy's Rosie Greer has got the second head, the man with two heads. Uh, anyway, <laughs> so uh, now we're going to do something that is a little different. We would like to print the ball out of one head and we'd like to print the cone with another. So normally that's very difficult, if not impossible, to pull off. But in this case, we're going to come over here and we are going to open Slicer 3R for multi-print editor. So we're now writing those STLs again to some temporary files. And those temporary files have the offsets. And now we're opening Slick 3R and capturing it. So you notice that I've captured it now. And we're going to come over here and we're going to drag the cone over. You see the cone is now there. And now you have a little secret, and that's to double click on this. So double click, and up pops a new menu. So you're going to load a modifier, and we're going to load the sphere. Now, these spheres are not coming from the original STL, but from the processed STLs that we generated when we opened this up. If you don't follow this procedure, you'll be very frustrated because every other STL will be bottom justified. They will lose their Z relevance. And if you go and load it into the other viewing box, this one here directly, you will not be able to uh, override how it, it takes and centers and justifies the parts. This one maintains the fidelity relationship of the two parts. So now I am going to load a part on top of that. Now you'll notice that I loaded a part and I loaded a modifier. The modifier tells Slicer to evacuate or give preference to the master. In this case the cone is the master and it's being modified by the first sphere. And then the second sphere is added to that master. So we're going to go back here and we're going to say cone 1 and we're going to say sphere to 2, and then the modifier, and this to 2. And now we're going to say OK. And now you'll see the little progress bar. It automatically jumps on and starts slicing it. OK. And now you can click on Preview. And you will notice, and I'm going to scroll in just a little bit, that the preview, you can see how it starts to work. Now, if you look here, 
you'll see how they were nice enough to keep the boundary of the two separate. Okay, so that these two guys are not fighting each other. And that's very, very important. Um, alrighty. Now, that said, it looks good, but what I wanted to do was I wanted to view this in the G-code editor. So we're going to export the G-code, and we'll just call it uh, Sphere Test. I'll give it test 6, 5. There you go. All righty. And now that's been saved. So now I'm going to add that G code back to um, Repetrel. And we have to open it up. And that is actually in our little working area under Documents, AMF Temp Files. And there it is. And we're going to go back to our view, which is over here. It takes a second. All right. And that is showing the G codes and the STL. So we're going to lose the STLs now. Uh, actually, I'm going to just delete them because I only want to deal with the G code that's finished. Okay. So now we're going to go layer by layer. Uh-huh. And now what you're looking at is a view of each head. So one color represents one head. And you will see now that the spheres are being uh, printed independent of each other. And there you go. And we can actually pick out a range here. And you can watch it going down. All right, so there is your teaser right there. And uh, follow these procedures, play around with it a little bit. You'll enjoy it. And we have a lot more features to come, but this is just the first starter. So I hope you enjoy it.